Hello! In a previous video, I talked about mulching and how it helps support watering and weeding when you're thinking about creating a garden that is self-sustainable, that it requires low maintenance. In this video, I want to talk about another one of the issues that can cause a headache for gardeners, and that is pests. There is different kinds of pests out there, different things that will come to your garden to eat your crops, destroy your plants, because you are in their ecosystems and you just created a lot of opportunities for them to feed, procreate, and thrive. That's essentially the nature of all living organisms. So when we think about pests, so you have deer, rabbit, and even um, woodchucks, those are usually large mammals that the best way to deal with them, to really eliminate them, is to just fence. Now, when we think about insects, and the kind of the smaller pests that usually are the main problem in the garden, so you have larvae, you have aphids, and you have worms that can go after your plants and can go after your crops. I've been teaching myself how to grow food for the last six years, and in my experience, the most effective way to deal with insects is actually to create an ecosystem, to create enough biodiversity in your garden by planting different types of plants, ornamentals, flowers, aromatic, plants that will attract a wide variety of local native insects that will essentially help make sure that there is a balance in your garden and in, among your crops. So what that looks like, for example, is if you plant a lot of flowers and especially funnels and cone flowers that attract a lot of different pollinators, they are going to help you obviously by doing pollinating uh, duty, but they also attract predatory insects like wasps. And these predatory insects will essentially do a vast majority of the work that you would have to do in their absence in terms of controlling pests and managing insect population within your garden. One thing about predators is that they are usually not the first group of creatures to show up in an ecosystem. You have to have food for them. So the best way to attract food per predator is, is to plant different flowers, different plants, to really create biodiversity in your garden. In my experience, that is the number one most effective way to address pests. There is other methods to deal with them. You can spray, you can do all of that. But in my experience, I've been doing it for um, up to six years now, and I don't have insect problems in my garden. I have a ton of insects and I welcome them because they're really controlling each other. But I don't have to go out there and spray and try to control different insect populations because it's just not an issue. The other thing is, the, besides the wasp, you also have the praying mantis. Praying mantis are very aggressive insects and they just eat about any other creature, um, good or bad. But praying mantis are really a great asset to your garden because praying mantis are not gonna show up in a weak ecosystem. When you know you have a good system going on is because you have praying mantis reproducing and living in your garden. I've been very fortunate in the last three years, I've noticed that the praying mantis population is steadily present in the garden. Uh, one year I observed up to three little nymphs in one of my bronze fennel plants, which is probably one of the favorite plants when it comes to having a praying mantis nursery. So definitely attract those predatory insects to your garden because they're gonna help you do a lot of the pest management that otherwise you would have to do. Thank you.